All right, so the next lesson is on something called exponential functions. All right, so these are, yeah, so these are different types of functions. I don't believe you've actually seen these before. All right, so, uh, so exponential functions, uh, these are functions where the uh, variable x is the exponent. Right? So in other words, uh, they can be written in this form here, y equals a bracket b to the x. All right, now, um, before I go into the kind of the restrictions here, um, this is just an example of an exponential function. Right? So notice that the a and the b here, they're just numbers, right? And then the x is the variable. So this is an example of an exponential function. Uh, now, before I go into that first example, though, um, I'm going to uh, just kind of go through some kind of technicalities or terminology, that kind of stuff. So the a here, this number here, that's out in front. So in this example, it's the two. Um, the a is called the multiplier. Okay, so, um, so that's just what the name that they call it. The B is called the base. Okay, so those are just two kind of terminology things. Uh, you might hear me say base or multiplier. Uh, that's what I'm uh, talking about. So the first number here is the multiplier. And the second number there is the base. Okay, the base is in the brackets. All right, now here it says that A must be greater than zero. All right, so in other words, A is positive. So this number here will always be a positive number. All right, so, um, so A is greater than zero, so in other words, positive. And B is also greater than zero, so B must also be positive. Uh, but as well, B cannot equal one. All right, so the base can never be one. So it's going to be either greater than uh, Greater than one or less than one, uh, but so positive. All right. Okay, so um, now the thing is, yeah, you don't have to get too hung up on these restrictions or anything. Uh, just kind of like as part of the definition, you have to include these restrictions. All right, All right so let's look at uh, this first example here. So this is the graph. So we're given the graph of y equals two bracket three to the x. All right, so this is the graph here, and we want to find these um, characteristics. All right, so the first one here is that we're going to find here is the y-intercept. Okay, so the y-intercept uh, is going to be the point, all right? So the x-value is zero, and so the y-value, right, right? So the y-intercept is right here. And so this point here you can see is at zero, two. Okay. So that would be the y-intercept. Um, now I'm just going to tell you right now, if we look at the equation, but you'll notice is that the multiplier is actually two. This will always be the case. All right? So your y-intercept will actually always be uh, the a value or the multiplier in the equation. All right. Um, all right. So yeah. So whatever numbers here out in front will always be the y-intercept. Um, now the reason for that. Actually, let me give you the reason for that. And I'm just going to show you algebraically, but in the context of this course, you just need to remember that this number here is the y-intercept always. Uh, however, uh, just to prove it as a proof, uh, you, to get your y-intercept, so where it crosses the y-axis, your x is always going to be zero. So the x value along this line here is zero. So therefore, um, if I was to, for, instance, for this example, plug in zero right, for the x, this would look like this. It would be y equals two bracket three to the zero power. Now the thing is that, um, if I was to do bed mass, right, you'd have to do exponents before multiplication. So you're not going to go two times three zero but you're going to go three to the zero so this is the first step you do um well anything to the zero power is always equal to one so no matter what the base is if my x value is zero this whole thing here is going to equal one so this actually becomes um yeah two times one and then you know that well anything times one is itself so therefore uh, we get y equals two all right so that is why basically yeah so uh, as kind of like a summary, uh, if you were to plug in zero for x, then this, no matter what number the base is, it'll always turn to a one. And then the 
number out in front, the multiplier times one is always itself. Right? So that's why, again, the, the y-intercept is always going to be the multiplier. Right? Good. All right, next up, end behavior. All right, so in fast, you'll find the end behavior. Uh, basically, what we want to do is just want to look at where uh, what's happening as the function goes to the right. So in other words, when does when the x values get larger, what happens to the graph? All right, so you can see that it's going along this line and then it goes shoots up. So you can imagine that it's just going to keep going up and up and up, but it's also going as you go to the right. So the value of the function itself, since it's going up, is what we call increasing. And so the end behavior in this case is increasing. So the two options you have for end behavior is uh, increasing or decreasing. All right, cool. Uh, next up, domain and range. Um, I want to kind of keep this graph here. So uh, I think. All right. So next up, domain. Domain again. Uh, if you remember from uh, yeah, we've been working on domain last couple of lessons or the last couple of days is when you run a scanner left to right. Okay, so this function you can imagine that it does go to the left forever and now it does shoot up. However, as it goes up, it does go to the right forever. Okay, so the domain here is actually going to be all real numbers. Right, the reason again it's all real numbers is because there's always a function as you go left to right. right so just remember that scanner analogy. Right, so even though this does shoot up, it does shoot up, but it does go to the right forever. So it does. Uh, so the domain itself is all real numbers. Now for the range, um, right. so for the range is when we go up and down. Right. So you can see that this function, you know, it kind of goes along here. And the thing is that it will actually never cross the x-axis. Right. So this here means that if I, if I go up and down, the function actually starts at zero and goes up. So the range in this case is going to be y is greater than zero. Okay, so there there will never be a function below anywhere below here. Right. Cool. All right. So um, yeah. So that's the first example. Uh, next up. All right. So this is another exponential function. All right. Notice that the uh, we have a multiplier of five and we have a base of zero point seven. Now compared to the previous example, you can see that the difference is that this function here is increasing. Whereas this function here is what they call decreasing. So it's going decreasing now. Um, so yeah, so let's just kind of go through these characteristics, right? So the y-intercept. Uh, you can see here that it does cross at five, which is again the multiplier. So the y-intercept here is at zero five. The end behavior. is uh, that it's decreasing. So the y values are getting smaller. Okay. So uh, yeah, so it does get smaller um, and lower. Right. Even though it looks like it flattens out, it is actually getting smaller and smaller right, if you go to the right. Uh, the domain, so if I ran a scanner to left to right, you can see that the domain here is um, all real numbers. And the range is again, uh, if I run a scanner up and down, right, there's no function down here below in the negative, so it's going to be y is greater than zero. All right. Now, the key thing here with this example is that uh, the difference between this one and the previous one here is that this function here is increasing, whereas the second example here is decreasing. And the rule is. Uh, basically, what you'll notice here in the equation, uh, here I had a base of three. Right? So three is greater than one. Uh, so basically, if the base is greater than one, it's going to increase. Uh, this one here, the base is less than one, uh, so it's just, so it's going to decrease. Right? Uh, but again, it still has to be positive. So um, yeah, so that's one of the key takeaways. So actually, I've listed off um, the um, some of the key points here. Right, in the summary here. So first one here, all exponential functions of the form y equals a blah 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 do not have an x-intercept. All right, so um, actually, you know what? I'm going to pull up uh, Desmos here and just uh, 
kind of toggle back and forth and uh, show you some examples here. Right. So let's see what does most. All right, so let's go y equals uh, two bracket four to the x power. All right, so notice here that um, the, again, the two here is the number out in front is always the y intercept. Um, so again, that y intercept is at two. Uh, now this uh, base here is greater than one, it's four. So you'll notice that the graph increases, right? Um, so any, any um, number greater than one will always have like an increasing, increasing, uh, well, sorry, the function will always be increasing. But as soon as, I put in a number less than one, or, but it still has to be positive. So let's go 0 0.5. All right, so notice that now it's decreasing. Um, you know, if I punch in a fraction like two over three, all right, it's decreasing. Um, 0. Point, even 0 0.9 is going to be decreasing, all right, because that's less than one, and so on. All right, so yeah, 0 0.2, something like that. Uh, but what you also notice is that so yeah, I'll visually show you here as I change this number out in front. So the y intercept is two here. I change it to a three. Actually, once I delete it, I said just delete it here. Uh, the a value here is one. Notice that the y intercept here is one. But if I punch in like a three there, and the y intercept is three and so on. So 4.5. And you can see that the y intercept is 4.5. All right. So again, this number out in front, the multiplier is always your y intercept. The B value here, the key takeaway here is that if it's greater than one, it's increasing. So if I change that to a two, it's increasing. But if it's less than one, uh, but still positive, it has, still be, it has to be positive, it's decreasing. Right. Um, now, the other thing is no matter what, uh, this line here, uh, the graph itself will never actually touch the x axis. Now, it looks like it does and goes longer, but if I was to actually zoom in, you'll see that. Let me just zoom in here. That, it gets really, really close, but as I zoom in, there's always a little bit of a gap. Right? So, um, so what that means is that, yeah, the function does approach the x-axis, but it will never actually ever cross it. All right. So, um, yeah, so that's the kind of like the key or the first point in the summary is that all exponential functions uh, do not have an x-intercept. Uh, number two here, the y-intercept of all exponential functions of the form y because they Bracket b to the x is a. All right, so this is just again just summarizing the the number out in front here is your y-intercept. Uh, if b is greater than one, right, so if the base is greater than one, then the exponential function is increasing. Uh, conversely, if it's uh, less than one, but still it has to be positive, so it still has to be greater than zero. So in other words, if it's between zero and one, uh, then it's decreasing. Uh, the domain of all exponential functions is all real numbers. And the range of all exponential functions is y is greater than zero. Okay, so domain and range wise, uh, they stay the same. Domain is all real numbers. Range is uh, y, uh, y is greater than zero. Right. Uh, yeah. All right, guys. Cool. So that's uh, that's exponential functions.